All right, everyone, we should be live. Let's make sure that's actually the case over on Rumble, of course. Spoon Battalion, assemble, of course. It's time for some news and some fun bands as well. You know, you got to have a spoon up there. It'd be funny if, like, some soldier did have, like, a spoon up in the helmet uh, netting, and then, like, the bullet hits the spoon and it saves their life or something. Could always happen. You know, stranger things. There was that one uh, uh, thing, I think it was from the... Uh, World War One. there were two bullets. One had hit the other midair somehow, and uh, that was recovered from the battlefield. And I thought that was a fun picture. I don't know if it's true or not. The bonus holes. We'd like to announce that after careful thought and consideration, we've decided to go in a new direction and get woke. All of our straight white male band members will be resigning from the band and will be replaced by strong BIPOC women who don't need no man. Yes, it's April Fool's Day, so I expect some interesting super chats. Just saying. I enjoy them. We've got to talk about inevitable ISIS attacks on the United States. Retired General Frank McKenzie said he believes the threat is growing, and he he alludes to the fact that he thinks uh, an attack is inevitable. Interesting how that uh, announcement comes right as the general election begins heating up. Yeah, yeah another 9-11, anyone? Yeah, it could happen. Giga Mango Fanta, King of Pilk Tong, Gouda Morning from Spamptons in Puckanoke, Texas. Use code word STEAKS to get half off your next order of pilk tongs. <laughs> We've got Republicans uh, attacking Joe Biden right now and, and Trump as well because of the trans day of visibility. There's some nuance there. We'll get into it. There's like fucking four layers of nuance. So we'll, we'll try to explain uh, what's going on. Rolling Stone actually putting out data from the FBI, which is very, very fuzzy math. We'll get into that as well. There's a link there, um, you know, in the description just to their tweet. They're too stupid to take it down, even though they're getting fact-checked. I'll go through the community notes, too, because some of you can't see them. If you're not on Twitter or you're not uh, allowed, if you're not, uh, I think you have to be verified to use community notes, and then you may or may not get accepted, actually. I've been on there. I don't really use them anymore, other than to rate other people's notes, um, because the system is fundamentally broken, or at least as was. Uh, I cannot call evacuation a success. New details of Afghanistan. Chaos. Yes, from the last ambassador to leave, as well as one of the State Department uh, members that were there uh, when the Afghanistan withdrawal happened. Countermanding Biden's story. I mean, we all knew it was bullshit anyway. But we've got a new release here that was just uh, obtained. And uh, this, is, this is new, actually, new, new testimony with regards to the uh, Afghanistan withdrawal. It was a fascinating read. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says we don't fully know conditions for Baltimore bridge repair. His messaging here, I'm actually going to praise him a little bit because his messaging at least is coherent. He's the only member of the administration with any seniority that actually makes coherent linguistic sense. And so he shines by, uh, by uh, comparison to somebody like Blinken or Harris or certainly Joe Biden himself. It's very, very intriguing. And keep in mind, his messaging isn't necessarily... Uh, on par here either, but at least he didn't get a triple bogey, to use a golf reference, since uh, Biden is apparently very fond of talking about that. And also, milk on ice. Yes, they found powdered milk down in Antarctica, you know, with uh, one of the, uh, the the expeditions there. They left a lot of shit behind, and it's perfectly preserved. And they were actually able to uh, look at the chemical composition of this powdered milk and make a determination. Is it fundamentally different from the milk that people are drinking nowadays? Well, we'll see. Very interesting. And that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, any uh, hard hitting news or anything. It's just I'm fascinated by this ship. I want to get much more into science. I'm going to be doing science later, actually. Some of these seedlings that I've got over here, I'm going to cull. And uh, I'm actually going to plant new ones. And I want to see the differential uh, because they're under grow lamps under relatively controlled conditions. I use the biochar uh, mix that I made. The growth rate on some of these plants is phantasmagoric. Uh, the problem is I also need to do a second planting now because the hot weather crops, um, by the time I get to plant them outside six weeks from now, roughly, uh, they'd be all leggy and, and the squash is literally trying to bloom at the moment. Like there's going to be squash flowers over there. I'm going to keep them on the windowsill. I'm not going to kill them. Um, some of them I will cull completely. Others I'll simply cull down. Uh, that pie over there, this is my spoon. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Without me, it's useless. Without it, I'm useless. Yes, you need a good spoon, of course. You know, you eat those MREs. Got a couple of them, actually. I did the shout-out video earlier, and I was happy about that. Veggie lasagna. 
a civilian MRE ration, gift from the, the, the United States, the people of the United States, the taxpayers of the United States. I can't wait to crack that one open and see. I want to see the difference between that and like uh, the standard military rations. The bonus holes, Biden-Harris 2024. Yes, we will probably get more of that. This April Fool's Day, which means Biden's Day, basically. Yesterday was Easter and Trans Visibility Day. So depending on who you are, you are uh, either uh, celebrating sex and indulgence or celebrating Jesus or you are celebrating, you know, transgenderism, I suppose. It depends. I guess transgenderism would be the civic religion. They're the religion of the Roman emperor at the moment. Anyway, we'll get right into the news really quickly. I'll do this first story, then I'll shout out the merch partners, and then I'll do the rest of the news. U.S. faces inevitable ISIS attacks at home following Moscow massacre, according to the retired general. Retired General Frank McKenzie says he believes the threat is growing after the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. I don't think it has to do with that. The, the idea of this article partially is that when we withdrew from Afghanistan, we created a power vacuum in which ISIS could operate. I would point out that al-Qaeda and ISIS don't really get along together. And the Taliban is certainly, they're nationalists. They want to effectively uh, localized Islamic nationalism. So they're not part of that caliph uh, mentality that ISIS has. ISIS really has more free reign in North Africa now than anywhere else. Uh, they got ground pounded in Syria by the Iranians, by the Russians. The United States was conducting all sorts of strikes on them. They can't really get in with the Houthi tribal rebels. They can't really get in with, like, they kind of work with Boko Haram sometimes in West Africa. So that could be a civil conflict with ECOVAS, actually. In fact, if, if things pop off there, I think ISIS might be involved. It's rather telling, though, that right as the uh, general election effectively begins, all of a sudden we're getting warnings that there are imminent ISIS attacks on the United States. So are we going to see some sort of major massacre that, you know, depending on the uh, the name of the shooter gets blamed on guns? Possibly. Are we going to see some skyjacking or something like that going on or someone bomb a train with chemical gas? Could happen. Uh, anything can and does happen right before an election when you've got a sick uniparty system that'll say, well, we know that ISIS is planning to kill a thousand people at this rock concert. But it would be convenient if they did so, because then we can start a war and, you know, then Biden becomes a wartime president. I am very concerned that that will actually happen. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but it seems awfully convenient timing uh, to me. Right on April Fool's Day, by the way. Also, total coincidence. Yeah, happy Easter Sunday, fuck nuts. Yeah, ISIS is going to bomb you. And when people get scared, they tend to vote incumbent now, don't they? So hopefully people don't get frightened about this because ISIS... Uh, was badly damaged uh, by the Syrians, the Iranians, the Russians, the United States as well, and various other countries. Um, the Taliban doesn't like them. The idea that Afghanistan is involved with them recuperating, uh, they're more like, likely to end up fighting the Taliban. And the Taliban will kick their ass, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure that I don't think the Taliban will have a problem clearing out a few thousand ISIS members that may exist in Afghanistan. But the fact that we've got a ranking former general saying that he believes that attacks are imminent. So not probable, not likely, but they will happen effectively. It's sort of like, hey, this tornado warning is nothing uh, to take non-seriously. You should get to the root cellar now because the big one is coming. There will be a cyclone here. Um, rather disturbing. Yeah. It's sort of like when Michael Bloomberg, a few weeks before the uh, 2020 election, correctly predicted, well, on election night, it looks like there will be a red wave, but then the mail-in ballots will start coming in. It's almost like they're telling you what's going to happen before it happens. Honestly, I would be surprised if it didn't occur over the coming months. Um, ISIS does have the resources to do that. Um, we've caught various terrorists attempting to enter the United States to the Swiss cheese southern border. It really only is a matter of time before a couple dozen ISIS members manage to gather in the United States and start buying fertilizer or something like that. It's really sad. It doesn't have to happen, but it is. Mikuhuntu 4X spot. Would they really do a 2001 part two to boost Biden? Yeah. Yeah, they would to stop. Well, not to boost Biden. They don't give a shit about him, but to uh, to stop Orange Man from breaking the toys. Sigil Stone. Good morning, Stick. So when do you and the rest of the 4077th ship out to Korea? Yeah. I'd like to see South Korea go get some uh, real authentic kimchi. By the way, originally kimchi did not have chili in it. That was a European advent, actually. Originally, kimchi would be more like sauerkraut. Did you know that? I like food history. 
Sir Thomas Drake, you can better uh, batter and fry up those squash blossoms. Good eating right there. Mm, boy, howdy, I tell you what. Sounds good. Nasturtium also you can eat. And hollyhock. I've thought about having, like, maybe I'll make a video of, like, unorthodox eatery sort of thing. Like, you know, squash blossoms and lily pods and stuff like that. That'd be fun. Sigilstone, ISIS going to suddenly pop up again. This time, the U.S. and the media will know it's ISIS right before the attack happens. Fascinating how ISIS doesn't assault Israel, but destroys Islamic historical sites. As Boko Haram does the same thing. Heritage Heirloom Seed Company, new giveaway for April. If you purchase a seed buck in April, you are entered to win a complete refund of your total order. Interesting. The bonus holes. We're serious. We're commies now. BLM is pretty cool, and we think everyone should get gender-affirming care and or maid services. X at the bonus holes. Rick Rod 95 Hey, Sticks, new clanker here. How can you be pagan but also apotheistic? Don't pagans believe in multiple gods? Why do you actually worship? Oh, who do you actually worship? Um, I am out as to whether those beings are more metaphoric more rationalizations or religiousizations, you could call them, of natural phenomena or actual entities or spirits or energies of some sort. There's no way to tell, so I don't bother thinking about it. But I am spiritual. I, I believe in what I've seen, and I've seen some weird shit. Adam Gardner, do you like mayonnaise? Not hugely. Um, it's a necessary additive for certain things, but I'm not huge. Like, I don't really put mayonnaise on my sandwiches all the time. I prefer, like, mustard and shit. The Copper Owl, nice helmet. How do you grow bamboo indoors? There's a bamboo plant right over there. You can't kill it. It's impossible uh, not to be able to grow it. Just stick it in some rocks and shit like that, and it'll, uh, that one I think is 20 years old, actually. You put it outside, it'll shoot right up. So uh, there was uh, one place when I was in Anshida, actually, in the Netherlands, and uh, there were these weird stalks growing out of the uh, side of the property. It was a derelict property. They they'd sold it, and it was awaiting uh, renovation. Apparently, they had bamboo in the backyard because the stalk grew like, it was like a foot tall. And then the next day, I walked by, and it was like six feet tall. And I was like, what the fuck? What am I even looking at? They rooted it all out because it's, I'm assuming it's invasive, but it was fucking crazy. I always thought uh, it can't possibly grow that fast. Oh, yeah, it does. Yes, it does. Anyways, let's get to our merch partners before we continue with more news. We have pumpkinfirecrafts.us where you can get spoons like this with the Ouroboros logo, of course. You can get much more. You can get uh, bookmarks, keychains, belt chains, and much more. Amulets, of course, my personal favorite. There's other great uh, handcrafted stuff as well. Uh, uh, BiltongUSA.com. Make sure to use code STICKS at checkout for free shipping, where you can get yummy meat. You can get bison, carbonasi, wagyu. Yes, the real stuff, and it is delicious and very, very fatty if you're getting the Japanese version especially. Also, some more STICKS merch. We've got tumblers, mugs, and shirts available there. Wickednedleembroidery.bigcartel.com, where you can get several varieties of STICKS Hex and Hammer hats, which when I wore it the first time, there were like 100 people begging me to uh, make them available. I'm like, oh, slow down. You know, things take time. Heritage Heirloom Seed Company.com, who just, of course, uh, chatted over on Rumble, where you can get seed survival buckets. There's also toiletries available. Their soap is fantastic, and there are more soaps coming soon, including a signature Sticks Hexen Hammer blend. Yes, there will be Sticks Hexen soap. It's not made of people, though. It's made with cedar and blueberry and clove, actually, which is going to be good. I can't wait to get my bar of it because. Um, it's not going to last very long. I'll probably just, I'll take a shower immediately just to smell it because I really love cedar and I've had soaps with blueberry and it just sort of works. It, it blends perfectly. Websterswares.com slash sticks hyphen wares. Also use code sticks again. Whenever you're uh, uh, prompted at checkout to use a code, you can use code sticks. You'll get some good stuff. Webster's Wares has Trump gear, like the flag behind me, as well as some Sticks Hammer merch available now, and much, much more. There's a lot of miscellaneous there that you can buy. Jamandbean.com, that is J-A-M-N-Bean.com, where you can get delicious coffee and tea. The tea blends smell really nice. My favorite, though, because I'm a little bit of a coffee addict, is the Costa Rica blend. Yes, the Costa Rica coffee is my favorite. I've tried several of them. The Costa Rica definitely is on a different level. I would uh, personally endorse that one above literally everything else. It's probably the best coffee that I've had. 
And I've had instant type 2 from a Vietnam ration, so keep that in mind. And finally, MTPU, that is mtpew.com, where you can get ammunition. You can get newly uh, made ammunition, or you can get uh, ammunition that was refilled from range brass. And there are various uh, calibers available. They do have 9mm, they do have 556 uh, et cetera. The Copper Owl, nine, uh, oh, I already read that one. Tigers are my totem, sent $10, no comment, thank you. Opinionated Junkie, if one has to build, br uh, be built bridge, tunnel, or ferry. You mean in Baltimore? Well, I mean, they're going to they're gonna make a new bridge. I guess right now they're planning something temporary in the meantime. Not sure. Sigilstone. Come on, Sticks. We know the pagan gods are real. Thor is a little gray alien with a shitload of clones. Ra, Ball, and others are evil worms possessing people. Haven't you seen the documentary Stargate? <laughs> I did see Stargate. I don't think I watched all of it, though. Next news story. We've got Trans Visibility Day. It happened to fall on Easter. Now, here's the problem. Um, level one of nuance. Joe Biden doesn't control lunar cycles, and therefore the fixed holiday of Trans Visibility Day, I mean, it basically is a holy day for Americans on the left at this point, uh, happened to overlap with Easter. Level of nuance number two, Joe Biden probably should not have issued a major proclamation that it was Trans Visibility Day before he got to any Easter celebrating. He's presumptively a Catholic, supposedly. Level three of nuance, Trump weighed in. And I talked about this this morning. He fucking hammered Joe Biden. In his uh, particular rebuttal to Joe Biden doing this, it was very funny because he parsed Catholicism and Christianity apart from one another, belying his Protestant roots, which I thought was funny. And I remarked this morning, he might have an understanding of the high versus low church ritualism versus common prayer sort of uh, uh, thing. Uh, in the end, of course, most uh, Protestant churches adopted quasi-Catholic ritualism. They became Romanized. There was a century-long debate over this, whether it was acceptable. And the first Christians in the New World generally, other than you know, the Spanish Catholics, in, in the English colonies, um, they used the Book of Common Prayer. They began forsaking the Church of England sort of thing. Uh, and certainly post-revolutionary period, the church was both civic and religious in nature. So the idea that so-called liberal Christianity is a bad thing, according to some groups, is actually anti-American, in my opinion. If you look historically, in my opinion, it's technically anti-American. That uh, combination of, uh, of the Christian religion with Enlightenment-era philosophy and learning and, and being independent was actually near and dear to all the founders. There was only one Catholic among them. And so it's an interesting thing. Uh, I would say that uh, Joe Biden was simply being fucking stupid. It was stupid on Easter Sunday of all days of the goddamn year to immediately put out a press just saying, well, I proclaim today to be transgendered uh, visibility day, as though Joe Biden even cares, like, like he's going to win any brownie points among the far left for that, uh, which is, uh, again, stupid of him. Uh, and it was his staff's idea. He didn't dream the idea up himself. He doesn't care about the issue. It was stupid of him to do that and sort of relegate, especially the Christian side of Easter, the Christianization of that pagan lunar festival. There really is, is a movable feast based on lunar movements and sex more than anything else. It was dumb of him, though, to come out for strategic reasons only and sort of relegate the holiday itself, the, the mainline holiday that 90% of Americans celebrate in some way or shape or form, whether it's religious, uh, Christian or pagan, or whether it's secular, you know, you just, you color eggs with your kids or something like that. It was dumb of him to come out and preempt it by saying, well, no, to, in, in other words, today's not Easter, it's Trans Day of Visibility. And people are like, huh, what? That being said, it's been celebrated for 15 years. So Joe Biden did not dream up the idea. He's just the first to proclaim it loud and proud and do so in a stupid manner by making it look like he doesn't give a shit about Easter itself. They still had the Easter egg roll and sh uh, shit at the White House. They weren't allowed to have religiously themed eggs, though. So all the little Christian children, they're not allowed to have a cross on their egg. Jeffrey Duran, good morning, Sticks and Fam. Glad to report I'm fully recovered from gallbladder surgery and have a trip to Thailand for a month this Friday from L.A. Good on you. Congratulations. I knew that you'd make it. Oh, no. What happens when the gallbladder is removed? I'm not actually sure. I don't even know what the gallbladder does. Sorry, Mrs. Rayford from AP Bio. BW, do we even still have a majority in the House? What do you think about them changing the race question on the census? 
Um, I haven't seen the census change. You can uh, DM me on Twitter. Maybe I can cover it tomorrow. Uh, no, uh, no, you don't have a majority in the House because there are too many neocons. There are too many Ken Bucks and shit like that in the uh, Republican Party. So there is no majority. No. Effectively, it is a split 50-50 House. And that's basically it. By the way, if you lose a couple more Republicans, Hakeem Jeffries will be able to seamlessly become speaker because the Democrats will have enough votes to do so. We'll see what happens. Next news story, data from the FBI shows that crime decreased significantly in 2023, including a 13% decline in murder, a 6% decline in reported violent crime, and a 4% decrease in reported property crime. This is from the Rolling Stone. The fact check, completely false. Crime is rising right now. It is not falling. What you have is more departments not actually giving data to the FBI at all. Well, if you don't collate the data, then you're not counting those crimes now, are you? It's effectively an attempt to lie by omission, actually, when you think about it. The idea is that uh, you simply underreport the crime. You, you, you did, some of the crimes are unaccounted for. Well, uh, you know, it fell. Well, yes, in some areas, thankfully, crime has fallen. That's a good thing. The problem in other is that in other cases, it's rising. And as far as property crime, it is not falling anywhere. Property crime is massively up. We've got, you know, carjackings and home invasions and shit like that. There are a number of proposed community notes that some of you can and some of you cannot see. And I will go through these a little bit. The first note that suggested the FBI data is incomplete. The National Crime Victimization Survey put out by the Department of Justice is a more reliable barometer of crime in the United States. And it shows most crimes are increasing under Biden. Although I would admit that this particular note, I, I didn't give it a rating of yes or no. Um, it does omit something, which is that under Biden means multiple years. It doesn't just mean 2023. It's just, it, again, there's damn lies, damn lies in statistics, and I fucking hate it. Crimes like murder are down, yet quality of life crimes are up. Carjackings, hate crimes, although that's a malleable term. Property crimes, larceny are all up. Crime is skyrocketing in the crimes that most affect everyday people biased language, again, why I didn't rate it. Uh, and that's why the perception is different than the statistics. That is uh, true, mostly. The one that I did rate is helpful. News are relying on FBI stats that are incomplete. NIBRS participation, 44% of all police departments fully participate. 24% submitted less than 12 months of data. 32 did not percent did not participate at all. One third of agencies in the US were not involved. LAPD and NYPD were not involved. 25% of U.S. population is not represented in this particular sample. I thought that was helpful, and they've got links to show that from a, a Police Chief magazine, by the way, CRS reports, congress.gov, etc. And then there are a bunch of people that I rated as not helpful trying to explain why context is not needed, but context is quite clearly needed because this particular post is not factual. Crime is up in the United States. If you fix for all crime and then you underreport those crimes, it looks like it ticked down a little bit. Unfortunately, it is still rising across the board in most parts of the United States. The fact that a couple of communities got their shit together does not negate the fact that crime is on the rise, especially property crime in many parts of the United States. Joe, hello. I like rusty spoons. I like to touch them. The way the rust feels against my salad fingers is almost orgasmic. Yes, I like salad fingers. It's hilarious. Creepy as fuck, but really, really talented. Isn't the dude that does salad fingers legit schizophrenic? And like, that's part of his, uh, the reason that he does that. Based Fran, when you get smoking, I was watching you, copied your technique, and have been smoke-free ever since. Excellent. Self-improvement. Sigilstone, a mostly peaceful drop in crime. If only there was an actual drop. BW sent you a link on Twitter. Thank you very much. I'll uh, look into that later and probably put it in the live stream or a one-off video tomorrow. I always do a news crawl right after the live streams. Then I go out into the garden. The Grizzly. Watch Joe Biden lose 10% of the urban vote because of the true Easter Day optics. Do you think the left and the liberals will finally crash into a schism? I'm really hoping so. I'm, uh, we all hope so, I think. I think I speak for 99% of the viewing audience at the moment. I cannot call evacuation a success. New details of Afghanistan chaos. New testimony from those who witnessed firsthand the confusion and chaos of the Afghanistan withdrawal further contradicts President Biden's assertion that the hurried and violent end of the longest war in American history was an extraordinary success. 
I mean, we all knew this, even liberals balked at it and they're like, what, what am I listening to? But now we've got uh, additional testimony in a transcribed interview before the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Former Foreign Service Officer Samuel Aronson said the very opposite in living harrowing color. Let me be clear, he told lawmakers behind closed doors, I cannot call this evacuation a success. Now, it's too little too late getting the testimony now because eh, people have already made up their minds about the Afghan withdrawal. Sort of like with the Twitter files, uh, Taibbi and others still continue to drop material. Eh, most people have tuned it out by now. Still significant, I still appreciate it, but I'm a political analyst and an online content creator, so my priorities are a little bit different than the average CNN viewer. The questions and answers from Aronson, who received a State Department commendation for heroism during the evacuation, as well as Ambassador Ross Wilson, the last U.S. diplomat to leave Afghanistan, that's some fucking balls on that dude, were obtained by Real Clear Politics and have not yet been published previously. Aronson recounted how American citizens, including children, were beaten by the Taliban, how U.S. passports were burned in a moment of panic when it seemed that Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul was about to be overrun, and how he delivered a horrible choice to a young Afghan mother. Get on the airplane and never see your husband again, or exit the airport and lose your only chance at freedom, Aronson told her, recalling for lawmakers the bleak exchange that summarized the mismanagement and at times bureaucratic incompetence of an evacuation that Biden himself had vowed would not be at all comparable to how the U.S. left Vietnam. No, it wasn't comparable. It was much more quick. The U.S. did much better at defending civilians and shit in Vietnam. <clears throat> that took a little bit longer. <clears throat> the Taliban overran things because Joe Biden, in a moment of egotism, said, I can't allow Donald Trump to take credit for this withdrawal. I have to make it mine. He did not understand the reigning cultural norms of Afghanistan and did not comprehend, nor did any of his staff apparently comprehend, or the fucking generals, the fact that when you make an agreement over there, you fucking keep to it or you lose a hand or worse. And that's what happened. The tribal leaders that joined the Taliban in overrunning uh, uh, Kabul and other areas of the country that were controlled by the military would not have joined the Taliban. It would have been conceived of as disgraceful. It would have been disrespectful to their culture had they joined with the Taliban if the United States had its unilateral agreement, again, with some of these warlords as well as with the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban. If the United States had withdrawn according to the agreed upon timetable, nobody would have attacked the airport. It would not have happened. Right now, Kabul would still be developing. It would still, be, women would be able to learn. Women would be able to go to school. Of course, there'd be sectarian attacks. Of course, the Taliban would still try to bully people, but it wouldn't have had the manpower to overrun things. The military could have taken care of it. Also, months beforehand, it was called for, and you can go on through this article if you, uh, if you want to, uh, their testimony is that it was urged months before this happened to begin evacuations immediately. That means military staff and equipment. That means certain civilians, you know, U.S. assets within the region, uh, leaving nobody behind. It was possible logistically to do so. The uh, Afghan military and the U.S. soldiers there could hold Kabul for an extended period of time, assuming that, uh, that you know, the waves don't come crashing down on them and they have to deal with tens of thousands of Taliban fighters joined by tens of thousands more tribal fighters. If it were just the Taliban alone, they probably could have held out, but they didn't. Everything collapsed within a matter of a few short days. And the reason is because Joe Biden pushed the date back. That's not mentioned in this article, but that is definitely the case. I would recall that Joe Biden understood the severity of the situation because he called the president of Afghanistan at the time and said, well, come on, man, you got to pretend for your people that everything's hunky-dory while we work this out. Don't worry too much. We'll try to figure a way through this, but lie to your own people and tell them we're in control. It was a Baghdad Bob moment. Effectively, Joe Biden asked the president of Afghanistan to be Baghdad Bob. Uh, Baghdad Bob. Now, don't worry. Our tanks are in the streets. Everything's fine. We're in control of the situation. Situation normal. All fucked up in the case of Joe Biden. Uh, everything's going to be fine. It was lie upon lie. Daryl Coleman, do you think the Easter bungle from Biden will do any lasting damage? No, I don't think it'll do any lasting damage. I just think that it's a temporary humiliation. Helios ending sticks. Why did people all of a sudden start using apostrophes to spell plurals? This is driving me insane. I don't know. I was taught both in school, both use and don't use the apostrophe depending on the situation. I don't know. I have no clue. A guy under a bridge. Breaking news. Aliens discovered to be OT Catholic. <laughs> Aliens would probably have their own weird religions. Maybe they involve sacrificing humans. So 
Sigil Stone, what if Biden isn't lying and he actually does think the Afghan withdrawal was a success and this is what he intended? When people tell you who they are, believe them. I think it was uh, political ass covering more than anything else. I think that he did not read the situation properly, did not understand how quickly things would fall apart and figured, well, as a backup, I can always blame Trump for the withdrawal. And if it does go well, I can take credit for it because I pushed the date back. And he didn't give a damn about the people of Afghanistan or the U.S. soldiers that were killed there. Alvman. Howdy. Another week of vids on Alvman and just the AR platform on YouTube and Rumble. Trying to catch up, but it's an old guy's struggle. Clank on. Next news story. It's regarding the uh, Baltimore Bridge, of course. Transportation Secretary Pete Booty Judge says we don't fully know conditions for Baltimore Bridge Repair. Now, keep in consideration, Booty Judge's transport secretary, obviously by now he's gotten a number of reports and had to read through them. It's his only fucking job. And, uh, you know, but uh, think about East Palestine. He uh, dressed like the OSHA poster boy and uh, showed up a few days after Trump left, actually. And that was very humorous, I'm sure. For the people of East Palestine, they were really, really chuckling at that one. Um, he's one of the more sane members of the administration on messaging. You can't count on Blinken. He can't answer basic questions in his role as head of the State Department. He's Secretary of State. Kamala Harris can't answer anything regarding, well, fucking anything. She's less coherent than Joe Biden. And then Joe Biden, he mumbles a bit and then falls to sleep after having his, uh, his daily dose of prune juice. Booty Judge, therefore, stands out as being generally sane and competent. I wouldn't vote for the dude, but he's not demented. He can carry on a conversation. He can string a paragraph together without making some major gaffe. Like, you can, and he actually knows what he's talking about. He is, in honesty, he is admitting, you know, we don't quite have everything worked out here. This is a big ass project. And of course, the federal government is saying that they want to take uh, taxpayer money from the uh, from the infrastructure bill to pay for the Baltimore Bridge. One of the applications that actually makes sense, considering how much shipping goes in and out of there. So, I don't know. It's a neutral decision. It's neither good nor bad. It's a Good that it's going to be rebuilt. It's bad that taxpayer money already allocated has to be used to uh, take care of it. I'm wondering, why didn't that money get allocated for something else already? I thought it was for a shit ton of infrastructure and all these things were already allocated for. Apparently, there's a little bit of a reserve. Anyway, as officials are working to clear debris and reopen the channel, Woody Judge says it remains unclear how long that process will take, but the work is underway. Yeah, they're already trying to clear the debris. He said that it's going to be a very complex process, noting the process for dismantling what remains of the bridge safely. It has to be done because that's the only way to get into most of the poor, uh, port of Baltimore, Booty Judge said, making clear its importance not only to Maryland, but for the national supply chains. Yeah, uh, it's the 19th largest port in the United States. And I think it's, what is it, the fifth largest or something on the eastern seaboard, if I remember correctly, or sixth, something like that. So it's a major port. Yeah, a lot of shit goes in and out of Baltimore. Yeah, you're going to have to direct that, uh, redirect that traffic to other ports that are already, you know, near capacity. It's going to be a difficult process. Then there's the process of rebuilding the bridge, which is expected to take longer. No shit, Sherlock. Booty Judge noted that work is already underway there as well after the federal government released $60 million in emergency relief funding. That's a drop in the bucket compared to how much a bridge that size costs, by the way. Additional emergency funds are expected to follow. This is not going to happen overnight, but we're going to try to help Maryland do it as quickly as they responsibly can, Booty Judge says. Now, uh, he's uh, asking for more money and uh, saying, well, you know, it should be bipartisan, just fucking allocate the money. One instance in which I actually agree with the administration. Now, qualifier. I realize that the government typically makes things um, late and over budget. I understand that. Uh, I'm not blind to that fact. But in such a situation, Baltimore itself and the state of Maryland do not have the resources to do it themselves. They're going to need more funding. It's one of those few in, uh, uh, isolated incidents in which actually the federal government's funding might actually be of use. Because I can't imagine most of the other infrastructure spending is of use. There's uh, some project north of here that's like a, it's got a sign out front that uh, says, well, this is part of Biden's infrastructure, bipartisan infrastructure project. And it's like, 19 and a half million dollars. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but uh, probably road work or something like that. That'll uh, 19 million dollars will get you a single mile of road probably at this point with Bidenomics. But you do have to rebuild the bridge. Um, otherwise, you're up Ship Creek without a paddle. Well, Ship Port without a paddle, I suppose, in their uh, instance. 
Senor Faces, how to do a feminine voice without HRT? Fumo, perhaps. Yes, there will never be Fumo plushies on this channel. Leonce the Lion, went to the wife's family for Easter, was repeatedly asked about being a Trump guy. Me being the only white person, I wonder where they got that idea. I don't even talk politics with lost causers. Yeah, no, I like to talk politics, but, uh, you know, most of the people around me semi-agree with me on most issues. Helios Ending, guess this leader, Red Jeep, Thai Hip, Erdogan. Oh, Erdogan, yeah. Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Joe, I remember when the Afghan withdrawal happened and the Taliban opened the prisons with ISIS there. First thing I thought is there will be more attacks. Yep, it's being said that it's inevitable. Yay! Ozzy's Robots, I hope Booty Judge builds a non-racist bridge. Yeah, they'll paint it rainbow colors, maybe. They'll call it the Rainbow Bridge. It'll be like a Super Mario game. Sigilstone, I've been seen dipshits on Twitter bitching about the bridge with, why will it cost so much? Like, all the metal and stuff is still right there. Like, fucker, are you serious? Video game logic ain't real. Yeah, you can refurbish some of that metal. I mean, it's capable of being melted down and recast and so forth, but it probably just fucking, it'd probably cost more than just getting new shit. Hopefully you don't get it from China. Music and fiction. With regards to Baltimore, one needs to look at what happened with the 2007 Minneapolis bridge collapse to see how it'll go. It's likely they'll precast the bridge and it'll take three to five years. They may try to expedite that process. BW, we have to get two catch-22s in the Republican Party. We have to have both normie and evangelical vote. Uh, but evangelical voters are hardline anti-abortion and normies aren't. We have two get rid of rhinos, but this loses the normies. <clears throat> no, getting rid of the rhinos won't lose the normies. You just need to uh, shift the whole party structure. Have a compromise platform. The Democrats successfully did that. They're sort of edging away from it now. Sigilstone, and my favorite is China built a bigger bridge in less time, like tofu, drag, and slavery is something to be proud of and aspire to. Yeah, they build it with substandard equipment. You know, you can build a bridge as quickly as you want, but how long does it actually work? How, what load can it bear before it crumbles? <clears throat> uh, Ozzy's Robots, what percent of Baltimore men will build the bridge? I don't know. It's going to be a lot of people that are employed in that construction job, though. The bridge is enormous. And then the final news story of the day. This is not hard-hitting news, but it's fascinating. Milk on ice. Antarctic time capsule of whole milk powder sheds light on enduring qualities of dairy products. Yes, you can actually still eat uh, cheese that's been frozen in Antarctica. Some of the uh, camps uh, from people that explored down there or uh, in the northern polar regions, uh, depending on the region as well, you can still eat that shit. Probably wouldn't taste good. Might not be really good for you, but technically speaking, it's edible. It's been so frozen that no bacteria can grow on it. In a remarkable discovery, whole milk powder manufactured in New Zealand in 1907 and transported to Antarctica with explorers seeking the South Pole was unveiled more after more than a century. The findings have allowed dairy researchers to answer the question, is the milk we enjoy today different from the milk consumed in previous generations? Fascinating question. I, let's see the answer. Now, a new comparative study in the Journal of Dairy Science has peered back in time to demonstrate that despite advancements in selective breeding and changes to farm practices, milk of the past and milk today share more similarities than differences and are still crucial building blocks of human nutrition. Yes, moo moo milk is tasty. And there are some people out there that are like, no, you know, it's not natural to drink the milk of, you know, um, this uh, bovine creature. Fuck that. Uh, it's tasty. It goes in cereal. It goes in various foods. And uh, you know, on a warm day, you know, you chug some ice cold milk and it's refreshing and it's full of calcium and shit. And no, I, I am pro milk. I'm pro dairy products. As a Caucasian, it's my birthright to uh, be able to break down lactose anyway. On New Year's Day in 1908, explorer Ernest Shackleton's British Antarctic expedition boarded the ship Nimrod, <laughs> set sail from Littleton, New Zealand, on a quest to be the first to set foot on the South Pole. While the wharf was packed with well-wishers, the ship was packed with dairy. 1,000 pounds of dried whole powder milk, 192 pounds of butter, and two cases of cheese. They found some of that before. I believe they taste tested it, and it probably tastes like nothing at this point. It probably tastes like cardboard. Shackleton and his crew would make it further south than anyone before them, within 100 nautical miles of the pole, and leave behind their base camp. A century later, one remaining container of Defiance brand whole milk powder was discovered during the Antarctic uh, Heritage Trust Restoration Project, having been frozen at Shackleton's base camp for the last hundred years. Imagine all the cool shit there. That'd be way beyond MRE eating. 
we'll have to uh, mount an Antarctic expedition and get some uh, food and send it in to Steve. Steve MRE Info, fascinating channel. Lead investigator, Skelt uh, G. Anima, uh, uh, Dr. Philosophy, principal research scientist with Fonterra Research and Development Center in Palmerston, North New Zealand, explained the discovery's significance. The Shackleton dried milk is possibly the best preserved sample manufactured during the pioneering years of commercial milk powder production. And its discovery gives us a once in a lifetime chance to understand the similarities and differences between roller dried milk uh, powder manufactured over 100 years ago with modern spray dried counterparts. It turns out, that there's very little difference between the two of them. The uh, profile is roughly the same. Now, this is not fresh milk. So, you know, you'd need a time capsule to go back in time and get like a gallon of fresh milk from a farm in the uh, early 20th century before all of the atomic bombs were exploded and stuff like that. Probably pretty good. And back then, uh, not all of it was pasteurized. There was no uh, law against selling raw milk back then. So it probably tastes different. By the way, to anyone out there that has ever uh, drank raw milk, does it really have a different flavor profile than pasteurized? Because I don't know. I've never tried it. I'd be willing to. Wasted Bonehead. Good morning from the grave. I'm 380 years old. You kiddos don't know what real milk tastes like. Yeah, also goat milk is pretty good. It's a yeah, it's an acquired taste, though. It's got a little bit of a sour gaminess to it that it would be off-putting to a lot of people. It's not as refreshing as Moo Moo Milk. I will say that, but it's it's tasty. Medic Babe 21D, wreckage on the boat, maritime salvage, private entity, wreckage in the water, Army Corps of Engineers, feds, bridge still on the pylons that didn't fall, Maryland dot state entity, operation enduring clusterfuck. Hmm. Neverson 42, it is not only safe but encouraged that you look directly at the eclipse only if you are in totality. Don't miss your chance to see it. It will not blind you as suggested in yesterday's vid. Now, it probably won't blind you, but it's still not a very good idea for your optic nerve. <clears throat> you can build a little shadow box, or you can use a piece of paper with a telescope and, you know, aim it at the uh, sun and, you know, cast it on there and see the eclipse. I'm just going to be enjoying the fact that it'll be completely dark like the middle of the night for a few minutes. It's going to be pretty funny. I dreamed last night about seeing the eclipse. Everything, I was uh, in my dream, actually. I was out on the lawn approaching the house and all of a sudden everything became dark and I could hear like the sounds of like night animals and stuff. And I looked up and I didn't look directly at it because even in my dream, for some reason, I knew it wasn't a good idea, but I could see the eclipse coming. I ran inside to get online and for some reason I was like ship posting, like, you know, the eclipse was going to make my ship posting better. And then I got back out and I could see the moon was beginning to leave the uh, face of the sun. Interesting dream. I have weird dreams sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, I do want to try. Um, I do want to try uh, raw milk sometime. I mean, it probably has more nutrients in it. Uh, also, possibly bacteria in it. That's the problem. You can get cowpox potentially. Of course, if you get cowpox, it can be hard to get smallpox. So you know, in the era of uh, non-vaccination for that, could be protective. You know, Russia could launch a warhead at any time. There are still live smallpox samples in Bethesda and in a couple of other labs in the world. And probably they should just fucking destroy them and get rid of all the genomic sequencing and everything else and just be done with it. Wouldn't be good to have that disease reemerge. That'd be a lot of dead people. And by the way, good luck getting everyone to take their jab. It would be a big problem at this point. Even if it's something that's genuinely highly deadly and very contagious, it would be difficult to get enough of the population to actually accept the, the, the shot. It, it'd be a big fucking problem if smallpox ever came back. Yeah, Acacius, there is actually a daily uh, dairy farm like two blocks from here. And they have, although I think those may be beef cattle. I'm not sure that's a milk operation. There are plenty of dairy farms around here, but uh, you're not allowed to sell raw milk. So, you know, I don't want to endanger some farmer and get him raided by the FBI because I showed up for a gallon. I'll have to find a way to get it. Maybe I'll just buy a cow. There's enough land for one. I've got to put up a little, you know, cow shed for him, I guess. Put a couple space eaters in there. Pox in Skyrim. The worst one was brain rot. I think especially if you were a mage. I always do battle mage myself. It's harder in the early levels when stealth is more appropriate, but once you... uh get to higher levels, uh, you know, basically you can just chew through anything. Like beating that one goofball in uh, 
on the volcanic island. I can't I've played Skyrim in years. That one that normally is kind of difficult because he like constantly calls down dragon energy and shit like that. And just, you know, he can teleport around. But if you're dual wielding destructive magic, you can constantly stagger him. So if you have the right enchanted ar armor, you can literally just, yeah, it takes about a minute to defeat him. Sigil Stone, if you really want raw milk, you can come to Pennsylvania for it. It's allowed for sale at farms and butcher shops. I thought it was federally illegal. I thought the FDA would crack down on them. Weren't they going after some uh, farm for selling like raw milk products and, and stuff like that not long ago? I think I talked about that last week in a live stream, actually. Yeah, I would definitely try raw milk, though. I'll just I'll squeeze it into the bucket myself and then just fill a glass, you know? Yeah, just uh, here's five bucks. Uh, let me go milk a cow. You have to show me how. I have no clue how to do it. Probably wouldn't be any good at it. <laughs> Sacks and violence. Vermont farms smell the worst. I never smelled so much piss from one before. I grew up in cow, chicken, horse country, Pennsylvania, and never encountered a smell like in Vermont. Yeah, I can get a little bit mushy sometimes. That's okay. Personally, I like the smell of cow shit. Every Vermonter does. When they spray it on the fields, well, just about this time of year, I always like the smell. Sigil Stone, disease is bad in Skyrim sucks. Please play Morrowind. Diseases straight fuck you in that game. And you're thinking of Mirak and the Dragonborn. Yes, Mirak. Yeah, that one dude who uh, who wants to become like a super god of sorts. It's best not to read that particular note after you kill uh, kill the assassins that are sent to kill you. It's best not to read that until you're fairly advanced, because otherwise he'll constantly show up and steal the dragon souls when you kill dragons. And so it becomes a real big problem. Anyways, I'm going to go offline now. I thank you all for tuning in to the over, well, almost 5,500 people that joined live. I will be live again tomorrow with the news. Also on Wednesday, I believe I have a bit of an appearance to make. There will be an announcement perhaps for, tomorrow, for uh, Wednesday's live stream teaming up with another content creator. But I'm just going to tease you with that news right now. Joe, I got some raw milk for you. One tablespoon at a time. Lol. Sigilstone, I don't know the specifics with the FDA, but the Pennsylvania does have raw milk for sale. And yes, you can bring your own bucket and they'll fill it for you. Oh, then that sounds convenient. That sounds good. Please, no more super chats, by the way. The Dashing Rogue, that spoon and helm will give away your position. Well, yeah, but I mean, that doesn't really matter. If they hit the spoon, then maybe it'll tiddly wink off. Uh, Siddlestone. Mirak is technically only supposed to steal dragon souls and soul slime. If he does in Skyrim itself, it's a bug. Yeah, he's constantly showing up and doing that shit. And uh, I heavily mod the game, so that's all right. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to go offline. I'll be live tomorrow around the same time, of course. Uh, whatever, the, I don't know, 1130-ish Eastern time. And on Friday, there will be an announcement that I am per uh, prospectively working with another creator to uh, get a different slot, actually. I'll be doing my own live stream, but then later on, I'll be on somebody else's show. Brian Zvar, who is worse, Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Buddy? Uh, I think Dahmer killed more people and was more clearly insane. So yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. That's about all. Peace out.